Good evening, everybody. This is John J. Gaiman on the mic here, coming at you with some ACSA primetime action here to begin the second season of the ACSA. We got a great matchup for you guys here today between the number 21 ranked Virginia Christian Saints and the number 12 ranked Alabama Hoover Panthers. It's going to be a great matchup here, man. So I need you guys to do me a favor. Smash that like button. Hit subscribe. You have to be brand new as well. Let's go ahead and get into some game action. Let's get it. So with all that being said, let's go and get things underway here. The Virginia Christian Saints are going to start off with the football as Chris Cashman is going to go ahead and scramble out of the pocket and pick up some eight yardage there. Alabama Hoover coming in as a heavy favorite. Still with one of the best rosters on paper. And then you got Virginia Christian. They're a solid team. They won the PlaybookSocial.com Bowl last season. But, you know, they feel like they have uh, been a little uh, controversy in the top 25. They don't feel like Virginia Christian belongs in the top 25 considering they couldn't win their own conference. So this is a great opportunity for the Saints to come up in here and try to prove these doubters wrong. But not a great start, though, as they do end up going ahead and punt the ball back to the Panthers. However, they do force a free and, right and out as Malcolm Clark takes one right to the right-hand side. Malcolm Clark with Doug Flutie, maximum football player of the year back in season one. He's going to get a very heavy workload today, I would imagine. Got some work that needs to be done. A six-yard gain for Clark. That's a second and four now. Going to throw short to the right-hand side over to Stewart, who was wide open on that curl route. Nobody seems to account for the receiver. So now going into Alabama Hoover territory. Chris Cashman takes the hit. The Panthers bringing the blitz, and they brought the heat successfully, though. It's going to knock them back four yards, leading to a second and long now as Chris Cashman going to try to throw it deep. He had a man. But it was underthrown. That was six points right there. You have to capitalize on those opportunities when you get them. Especially when you're here as, the, as an underdog. And of course, they go to Malcolm Clark. He can't pick up the yards D and pick up the first down. And they have to give the ball back to the Panthers. As we get a good look at this Alabama Hoover offense once again. This is a squad that was missing Xavier Tobek. Back in season one for half of the year led to a few of the losses that they took not only in conference play, but in bowl season as well. They lost to Southeastern Coast of Florida in the League Crawler Bowl. But that being said, they do have the whole gang back together now. And they look poised to make a run this season. We got third and five coming up here. Xavier Tobek in the shotgun ready to receive the snap. Tomac actually going to hand it off to Johnson, no, And he can't pick up the first down. The Panthers punting this ball away. His Niver team really has been able to find a rhythm on offense still most of the way into this first quarter. And nobody has put up any points on the board here just yet. We'll see if the Saints can go ahead and break that here. We've got a seven-yard gain on the play. Leading to a second and short now. Coming up, Cashman will be drawing back the pass. Trying to throw it to the left-hand side. Has Malcolm Quark. He's down the sideline, though. He's pushed out of bounds across the 45-yard line. The ACSA player of the year back in season one. Making huge plays for this offense. And now the Saints are in Panford territory here once again. As Chris Cashman, he's going to go ahead and scramble as well. The Saints... Now look like to be in field goal range, but I'm sure you got to get more than just field goals in order to beat this team here today. We'll see if they could do just that. And now second and four, Cashman dropping back and a throw to the right-hand side. Has Stewart once again wide butt naked open on that right-hand side and is able to pick up the first down as a result of that easy throw for Chris Cashman. As they have a fresh set of downs to work with now, Cashman. Going to go ahead and scramble upfield some more and picks up the first down here once again. Another first down for the Saints. As Cashman will try to punch it in. Has Palmer in the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. 
and Virginia Christian makes it a seven to nothing lead here. And we'll see how the Panthers can respond. Last play of the first quarter, Toback able to go ahead and pick up the first down as that does end up wrapping up the first quarter of play. And looks like we got ourselves a ball game here, man. Virginia Christian, they hold on to a seven nothing lead here at the end of the first quarter of play. So let's get things started with the second quarter now as Xavier and Toback will drop back the pass on this second and nine. Trying to throw it to the right hand side but uncharacteristically misses that receiver. Should have been an easy throw for one of the best quarterbacks in the ACSA. He might be a little bit, you know, a little bit rusty, you know, coming off of a major injury that cost him the second half of his season last year. As Toback once again has a man down the right sideline. He's got Jordan. Jordan's not going to be chased down anytime soon. Touchdown, Panthers. And Alabama Hoover ties this thing up at seven apiece. As now we get set for kickoff here after a huge touchdown pass from Xavier Toback. 86 of Virginia Christian. Going to go ahead and receive the kick. Breaks multiple tackles. Jumps over one guy. Stays on the feet. He is gone like a girl in a country song touchdown saints and what an amazing kick return for a touchdown here vcu in a matter of seconds retakes the lead we got ourselves an upset alert here folks this would be huge for the virginia christian program if they beat the alabama hoover panthers and they could do just that they got a fumble recovery here as well friend they do go free and out they still get a fuel goal though but virginia christian man they are looking very good with an early 17 to 7 lead here as they go over to palmer on the right hand side he has a touchdown catch from earlier today he's responsible for the catch this time around for the first down is now second and eight cashman throwing over to the left hand side find stewart down the sideline as well he's going to be able to pick up a first down here as well getting him to the 25 yard line now within field goal range for the saints as cashman will again try to throw a short to the right hand side trying to get it to malcolm clark but there's a little bit of a miscommunication there so now third and long coming up for the saints need to convert here chris cashman lining up at a five wide set initially now we got three wide bunch on the right hand side. Because now Cashman will drop back some more. Trying to throw over the middle. Finds Grant. Who catches it off to deflection for the first down. You absolutely love to see it. As Cashman and company trying to punch it in. Clark picking up another first down here once again. Making it a goal line situation for the Saints. As Cashman one more time trying to throw it. It's considered a fumble though. But thankfully, the Saints recover it, though, avoiding near disaster. As Malcolm Clark going to try to run it himself well short of the marker. The Saints will go ahead and settle for another field goal here. But Virginia Christian, man, they're playing really solid. Up 20-7 to here at, you know, with just a minute 20 left here in the first half. They could definitely finish strong, especially with that interception. What a way to finish the first half taking care of business and with 45 seconds left VCU could potentially add on to this lead further as we got third and six coming up about looks like the Saints are going to go ahead and just try to run out the clock and feel pretty good with where they're at I'll try to stomp on their throat a little bit but that's just me though but Palmer making a catch out of bounds I don't know why Virginia Christian's just uh, sitting on the clock right now. They could be doing a lot more right now as Cashman's going to try to throw for the end zone, but it's intercepted. A Hail Mary that does end up getting caught by the Alabama Hoover defense. So the score does remain 20-7, but Virginia Christian taking it to one of the premier programs in the ACSA here early. Second half coming shortly. Welcome back to the second half of play here as we have a surprising development happening here. Virginia Christian is up on Alabama Hoover 20-7. to 
Gray and the Panthers will go ahead and start with the football here to begin the second half. You know, the offense got to play a whole lot better. You got to put more trust in Xavier Toback. I know he's not having the best day so far here, but that being said, though, this is still one of the best quarterbacks in the ACSA. You got to put some more trust in the man as Toback has a clean pocket to work with. He's going to end up scrambling out and nearly picking up the first down here all by himself. A nine-yard gain on the play. It's now second and one. Zobak will drop back some more. Got some time to work with. Is going to be able to pick up a first down here as well. Another first down for the Panthers as they approach midfield. Next play. And they will get across midfield. Kaufman able to get a wide butt naked open on that slant pattern to pick up a first down here. As Frank Kaufman does make his first catch of the day. Is now first and ten. Toback trying to throw it deep once again, but this time it's incomplete though. Thrown in double coverage didn't look like his feet was set, which did seem to have an effect on the accuracy. So now second and ten here. Toback making a guy miss. Gonna go ahead and scramble himself. Slide down to pick up a few yards and make sure that he also doesn't get lit up like a Christmas tree because he does have some injury history, of course. That's now we got third and five here for the Panthers. Toback going to go ahead, run it forward, and pick up the first down here once again. Another solid drive going for the Panthers. We'll see if they can go ahead and convert here, although they got a third and long that they have to deal with. Toback trying to throw it to Quinn, but he can't turn up field in time before he gets out of bounds. He has the space to get it done, but Xavier Toback just did not see him soon enough, so... Panthers had to go ahead and settle for a field goal to make this thing 20 to 10. But that being said, those Saints didn't settle for a free and out. So now the Panthers offense is back on the field. We'll see if we have a different set of results this time around as the Saints are trying to hang on and get a huge non-conference win to begin this season. we got a third and 10 coming up here. Tomek in the shotgun, dropping back. He's looking around, going to send this one deep downfield as Jordan, who's dropped at the one yard line, and that's even with the roughing the passer penalty. The penalty will end up being declined, and Tobank going to go ahead, take care of business, throw one in the end zone for Alves, who gets another touchdown for Alabama Hoover that now makes this a one-score game. But they're going to go for two points here, and big high risk, high reward, Getting this two-point conversion means they can take the lead with a field goal. If not, they will need a touchdown to pull ahead, but it works well for him, though. It was a bold strategy for Godden, and it also works out for Godden. Two-point conversion is good for the Panthers. It is now 20-18. We got a two-point game now. We'll see how Virginia Christian can respond. The Panthers currently on an 11-0 run here to begin the second half. And the key to win this game, they got to go to Malcolm Clark some more. Got to show the man some more love here. As we got a second and eight coming up. Cashman dropping back the pass here. He's looking around. Going to go ahead and scramble some more. Does take a pretty big shot, but is going to be able to bounce back up. He watches the hockey highlights, so he's perfectly fine. So now third and two coming up here for the Saints. Huge third down conversion that they need to pick up here is Cashman. Dropping back. Going to throw this thing over the middle. Has a man and finds Wilmer. What a contested catch. Way to make a play for the quarterback as well. As it's a fresh set of downs that the Saints get to work with. As Cashman will throw over the right hand side here again. That's incomplete. But we have a holding penalty on Devin Jay. On the offensive lineman for the Saints. So now a second and long awaiting Virginia Christian as Cashman. Trying to pick it up here. Cashman going down the sideline. It's good for a 10-yard gain on the play here as well. We got third and six coming up here. Let's see what we got going on here as Cashman in the shotgun. Ready to get things going. As Malcolm Clark going to try to pick up the first down, actually. It was a toss to the right-hand side. But nowhere close to the marker, unfortunately. So another field goal that Virginia Christian had to settle with, but... 23 to 18 they now make it a five-point game so now Alabama Hoover cannot take the lead using a field goal and we got another sack here Virginia Christian's defense 
just playing absolutely relentless. And I have to say that is the biggest reason that they're winning right now. This defense is doing a great job of holding this team just in a tough spot right now overall. As we go into that final quarter of play, Virginia Christian with the five-point lead. Can they hold on and take the upset? We're about to find out here. Fourth quarter getting started. And it starts with a 39 for Tobek. Needs convert. Trying to run for the first down. But it's nowhere short of the marker. And Tobek does not get the yards needed. And a very interesting decision. They're actually going to try to go for the field goal here. The kick is up and it is no good. I'm really surprised that they didn't try to go for it on fourth down. But... I'm just a guy that, you know, talks over the highlights, man. I don't make the decisions for either team. I just think it's a really dumb call, personally. But it really is what it is, though, as we have third and short going. Thankfully, Virginia Christian can't take advantage. They actually went three and out on their next possession. So third and short coming up for the Panthers now. We'll see if they can uh, approach this drive a little bit smarter this time around as Johnson does end up picking up the first down here for the Panthers. Now we got first and 10. Tobank dropping back some more. He's looking around. Going to try to scramble out of the pocket. Does end up sliding down and picking up the first down here in the process. As we have another first and 10 coming up. This time in Virginia Christian territory. Trying to move this thing downfield. They are being a little bit methodical. They do have faith in that offense. So it has been so explosive during this series. With a lot of those key guys back. They can do some work here as Tobac going to go ahead and slide down here once again. Another first down here for the Panthers. It's now first and ten. Tobac, he's dropping back. He's got some time to work with, though. He's going to scramble out of the pocket and nearly pick up the first down here once again. Now we'll be facing second and short. Xavier Tobac has struggled in the air today. He does have two touchdowns, but... Only 139 yards passing, but thankfully the legs are working for him as well. As Tobek will try to pass once again, he uses his legs once again and picks up another first down here in the process. It's now another first and 10 coming up, now sitting in the red zone. This Panthers team needs to finish here, but they almost throw an interception. Oh, that was so close. But instead, an incomplete pass keeps the drive alive. As Tobek will try to drop back here again. Going to try to run for the first down. Marker! If he didn't slide down, he would have had the first down. But instead, it's third and short. Hopefully, they aren't going to do that. We got third and one here. Tobek dropping back. Going to throw it over to... Try to throw... Not throw it, but hand it off to Johnson. Short of the marker, but it's only two yards that they need. And the Panthers are deciding to go for a field goal. They don't have faith in the offense in this situation. Very head-scratching call, but the field goal will be up, and it's going to be good at least. So it does make it a two-point game. But now you're giving Virginia Christian the opportunity here with one of the best players in ACSA football in Malcolm Clark to run with him and potentially run this clock out here Although, Virginia Chris is going to try to pass, but they're going to go ahead and run with it smartly. Chris Cashman making the wise decision. Nobody wide open, so they can still run down this clock a little bit, or at least take some timeouts away from Alabama Hoover as Cashman will try to go upfield again. Picks up the first down, but a holding penalty by Kevin Goodman is going to set them back. Because now we got third and long, Clark. Just going to go ahead and keep it on the ground with him. He is a sure-handed ball carry. He does not fumble the football, at least very often. And with the final timeout, Alabama Hoover still has a chance to win this thing. Only one minute left to play, though. Got to go quickly as Tobek dropping back. He's looking around. Got some time to work with. Going to throw it downfield. Has Quinn open downfield, and it's a first down for the Panthers. That instantly gets them in field goal range. Hopefully they go that route as Tobek will try to drop back once again. Going to go for the end zone. Wanted it all, but it's going to be incomplete. Although it does end up stopping the clock. It's now 37 seconds left. Tobek dropping back some more. This time thrown over the middle to Jordan. 
He was able to pick up eight yards there on the reception. And they're having a hard time getting things going. So now they don't even spike it. They have to go for the end zone or this game is over. And the completion is going to cost them dearly. So Virginia Christian is actually going to do the unthinkable. The Saints defeat Alabama Hoover in today's ACSA game of the week. Winning by a final score of 23 to 21. So now with the ACSA game of the week out of the way, let's go ahead now and check out the recent ACSA top 25 polls that were recently at least, as well as take a look as well with the 10 games that will be shown here on the channel over the course of next week. Now that we are in week two of the second season of the ACSA. So let's go ahead now and jump into the ACSA top 25 polls that were just released and we don't have a you know, many surprises here at the very top. Warwick still remains as the new number one team in the nation. Lake Ozigo also holding strong at two. Other than that, we got some minor changes. You know, a couple of teams, you know, moving up and down a couple of spots. With the exception of Amazon, the Delivery Boys, they started off ranked number 14 in the nation. And they jump all the way up to number eight. They have certainly looked very good um, here early in the season. And this was a team that also finished with momentum as well. They won the Scalp Scoops Bowl as well on top of that. Amazon could be a dark horse from the Big Pacific to represent them in the uh, college football playoff when it's all said and done. But, you know, right now, not a lot of change here in these tops eight. We don't have, you know, too many crazy upsets like we did back in season one. Up in the next tier of the ACSA Top 25 rankings, we see some teams that definitely made some more movement, notably the Seattle College Cascades. Last week, they were ranked number four in the nation when they hosted the Hawaii State Rough Waves at home, and that was no longer the case. They got demolished at home by an unranked team, a team with such expectations to at least try and make it back to the college football playoff or have notable success going to a major bowl game. This was not how they wanted to start the season off the Seattle College Cascades. They fall down number nine. It's one of the biggest drops of the week for teams that are still in the top ACSA top 25. Although that being said, there's still some teams that had some major movement as well. Southfield, Eastern Pennsylvania, and Herbert Hoover each move up six spots in their own right. They've made some major gains, so you certainly love to see that. Central Georgia A&M, they actually win their opener this time around so they move up five spots as well and little rock does the same they're doing a good job of handling those early season expectations they come in with a little bit more hype than what they did back in season one and are doing a good job with handling that so far and the virginia christian saints surprisingly they beat alabama hoover and they get rewarded by moving up five spots in the recent acsa time 25 poll the virginia christian saints the only team from the sunshine conference that is ranked in the ACSA top 25 they move up to number 16 in the nation and for the remaining top 25 teams in this week's ACSA top 25 poll going into week two this is where we see the most movement in the polls coastal Alabama and Chattanooga Tech they each move up seven spots after each of those teams not only take care of business but do so handily they're now the 17th and 18th ranked teams in the nation Osterdam in the southeastern coast of Florida, meanwhile, they are just barely holding on. Both of those teams taking an upset loss off screen during the course of week one. Osterdam probably taking the biggest fall. They fall down 14 spots. Southeastern coast of Florida also falling 13 spots. And then on top of that, we have five new teams joining the ACSA Top 25 poll that were ranked in the preseason Top 25 poll that was released roughly a week ago. So... Mississippi A&M, Hawatha, and Iowa Tech, Sabio Dream 2, they all make appearances back in the ACSA Top 25 poll, but the most notable is Alfred Tech. These are the defending champions of the National Athletic Conference and also took care of business against Hawatha in the PX1 Sports Bowl back in Season 1, and Alfred Tech, as a result of that, they make their very first appearance in the ACSA Top 25, so congratulations for Alfred Tech for finally cracking that top 25 poll the second national athletic conference team to do just that
So with the ACSA Top 25 officially revealed here on Maximum Football 2020, it is now time to go ahead and take a look at the 10 games that will be shown here on the channel throughout the course of the week. Since there isn't any Top 25 games being played, we'll uh, go ahead and divide all 10 games into three different parts with a weekly recap for next Saturday. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the games that will be shown over the course of this week. First game that we have on the docket is the Eastern Pennsylvania Beavers. They come in ranked number 11 in the nation and they are going to play against a solid team from the Midwest Conference in the University of Wisconsin, Kenosha. The Kenosha Comets, they come in 1-0 on the season already with more non-conference wins that they have in the previous year. Eastern Pennsylvania, they could have a surprising test on their hands. If they're not careful, this is going to kick off week two action here of the ACSA. Up next, following, we will have the Amazon Delivery Boys, who come in ranked number eight in the country. We will see them for the first time here in season two. Take on the Syracuse State Lakers, who really struggled in season one and look like to be on that track here again in season two if they don't get things turned around quickly. Amazon Delivery Boys will be following the Eastern Pennsylvania vs. University of Wisconsin Kenosha game that is dropping Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. Then to wrap up Monday night, we have the third ranked team in the nation, Southern New Mexico once again. Going on the road, they're going to play against the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. The Los Valrios are a team that we only got to watch one time. They played against Nazareth and actually almost pulled off the upset. And, you know, Nazareth is a solid team and the Big Southwest Conference, even though they did not get to go to a bowl game in the previous season. But that being said, this should be a very fun game to watch. I'm very excited to see how Southern New Mexico can handle that game. But then after that, we go into Wednesday night's game. And to start off Wednesday night, we have the Southfield Dalmatians who are ranked in the top 10 here in the ACSA for this week. They're going to go and take on the Minnesota State Twin City Beavers, who if you guys remember back in week one, they played against the Iroquois Eagles, who nearly put off the upset. They ended up losing that game 42-29. to But this is a better team than what people give credit for. They're much improved. And I'm interested to see how Southfield goes and handles that game against, uh, you know, Twin City Beavers. After that, we'll get a look at the Little Rock Yellow Jackets for the very first time here in Season 2. They come in, of course, ranked number 15 in the nation and going on the road to play against the Thomas Jefferson Minutemen, who really struggled in Season 1 and won the worst conferences in college football. We'll see if Thomas Jefferson shows any improvement between year one or year two, or if the Little Rock Yellow Jackets will be able to run all over them. And then finally, to wrap up part two, we have the Central Georgia A&M Bulldogs, who won their opening game for the first time in this series. They'll now go on and take on the Richmond Polytechnic Demons to try and go ahead and continue that momentum here in non-conference play within season two. Finally, we have part three here of the second week of the ACSA, which will feature four games. The first game of which is going to feature Chattanooga Tech of Fighting Bass, looking to play against George Fox Eugene, who's off to a hot start. We'll see if they can go ahead and take out a second top 25 team here in their non-conference schedule. And then after that, we'll have the Southeastern Coast of Florida, which is barely clinging on to the top 25. They now got to go and play the Tulsa Christian Pioneers from the Stars and Stripes Conference. We'll see if the Southeastern Coast has what it takes to remain in this top 25. They do indeed need to win this game. After those two games, we'll now go to the third game of this third part where the 12th ranked Herbert Hoover Old Glory will play against the Beckett Ridge Farmers, who looks like a team that could win the National Athletic Conference back in Season 1, but kind of disappointed. We'll see if the Farmers can do a little bit better here in Season 2, and we'll also see if Herbert Hoover has what it takes to remain competitive in the Atlantic Shore Conference, competing with the likes of Warwick or Southeastern Coast of Florida. And then, of course, the final game that we have planned here for you guys, we have the Alfred Tech Bulls. They're making their first appearance in the ACSA Top 25. 
They host the Lebanon Aviators, who was a preseason top 25 team back in season one, but have disappointed ever since. We'll see if Alfred Tech can avoid the same thing, or will they have the same fate here in season two? We'll find that out all this week, but in the meantime, that is going to end today's ACSA episode. Do me a favor and please smash that like button and hit subscribe if you're new. This is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off. Hoping you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.